Hey friends, are you ready for hot news today? Because I'm ready. I bet you sweet butt that you're ready to answer this existential question of the day, which is, our butt's legs need to know. Okay, I know the gluteus maximus is a different muscle. You got the thigh muscle, you got the calf muscle, all of that. This is the butt muscle included. Is your butt part of your leg? Need to know, answer in the poll right up there. Uh-huh. Ooh, oh, oh. Gotta, gotta have the answer to these questions. And you also have to have some of our sweet, fresh new merch, which you can pick up at the link in the video description. Look at how gorgeous it is, the CPU break out designed by our own designer lovely i love it check it out at the link in the video description pick some fresh merch up for yourself to survive this time where you're gonna have to isolate yourself from your friends and family in quarantine oh wait that's just called being a gamer got him Woo! but let's go ahead and jump on into the hot news which is again amd again really another one ah when are we gonna be done with polaris because it has been announced that on march 9th AMD is gonna be releasing the RX 590 GME. It's gonna be exclusive to China. As far as we know, they haven't announced any North American plans, but another RX series graphics card in the Polaris family. I wanna break this down for you. The RX 480 became the RX 580, which became the RX 580X because they had to rebrand it for OEMs, which became the RX 590, which now has become the RX 590 GME. And if you're wondering what the difference between the RX 590 and RX 590 GME is, the GME is a lower clocked version of the RX 590, to which you would ask, isn't that just an RX 580? And I would say, yeah. Yeah, just about. A, a fast RX 580 is probably gonna be as good as this RX 590 GME. Now the Polaris that's in the RX 590 is based on 12 nanometers, whereas in the 580 it's 14 nanometers, but it's not that much better performance. They're cutting about 160 megahertz off of the core clock, which is only 45 megahertz faster than the RX 580. I don't get it. It, AMD apparently isn't ready to launch any sort of mid-range Navi in China somehow, or they have and they figured that the RX 590 isn't displaced by the RX 5600 or 5500 XT. I don't get it, the pricing is okay. I just, ah, it's like $200 after conversion. I don't get it. Do you guys have any answers? Cause I don't. But speaking of companies that rebrand themselves, Intel, their new 10th generation CPUs, we've got more pictures of the 10900K and the 10700K. You got pictures right here. Look at those pictures. Somebody took a picture of the confidential chips. There's a trash can in one of the shots. Yeah, we already know these are coming. It's just a matter of when. And Dell also has released an advert showcasing that they have 10th gen Intel core processors, which obviously Intel hasn't yet announced themselves. So Dell just kind of letting the rabbit out out of the cat for that one. Speaking of Intel, they are trying to undo the damage of their lack of being able to innovate by opening up, or rather reopening, the Costa Rica fabrication facility that they previously shut down. This is coming after all of the rumors where it's been Intel is gonna tap TSMC to build out their CPUs, or Intel is gonna tap global foundries to build out their chipsets. None of that has happened, even though it's been rumored hundreds of times, but Intel is actually gonna be reopening their Costa Rica facility in order to produce 14 nanometer parts because they still haven't been able to transition to 10 nanometers. So it's good for people who need jobs, but it's kind of weird that they're reopening one and it's only gonna come online in August. It's gonna be about five months from when they announce that they're getting this ready to still produce 14 nanometers. If that tells you anything about where Intel is in their pipeline, they're readying something for August of a technology that's been out for five years. They're not going anywhere forward. You know who is going forward? CEA Letty, which I'm pronouncing probably incorrectly. They are showcasing what is a 96 core CPU that's made of six 16 core chiplets 3D stacked onto one another. Obviously these are gonna be low powered and obviously these aren't gonna be uh, as comparable to a gaming GPU, but to show that you can put 96 cores on a single CPU just by using an active interposer, making things work, 28 nanometers on some of the parts, it's just, it's, it's a big fat 96 core chip. And then the company known as Ampere, which is also what we're expecting NVIDIA to call their next generation architecture, they have unveiled their Ampere cloud native ARM processor, which features 80 cores, 80 cores on an Ampere Ultra cloud native. It can handle eight channel DDR4. It can support four terabytes of memory per socket, but it's expected to have anywhere from 45 to 210 watts of TDP. It's gonna be a blazing fast chip. It's spices the view but slap still.
Speaking of slappings, Xerox is looking to slap HP with some money by buying them out for $24 a share. That's the current conversation that's going around there. They've secured $24 billion to help pick up HP. I don't know, I thought Xerox was dead. Were you killed? Sadly, yes but I lived. To be quite honest, so that, that shows my ignorance, but HP gonna be dead soon. The CEOs who ruined the entire venture of them buying out Palm and then never releasing another good Palm phone after they took over. I missed the Palm pre days. I'm still, sad about that. I'm still salty about not getting really good Palm phones later on. They were really good for the time. They were the best multitasking it was. I know I harp on this train a lot, but I'm gonna keep going there. And you know where you're gonna keep going? Anywhere in your vehicle, thanks to Goodyear's new smart tire concept that if you get a flat, it prints its own tread back. It has a 3D printer inside of it, sort of. It's not like a mechanical print head. It's more like Play-Doh that comes out of a spaghetti hole and you squeeze it and then it like makes the hair. You know what I'm talking about? What? <laughs> so if you take Play-Doh and you force it through a small hole, you know how it comes out? That's what they're basically doing with some like synthetic rubber and spider silk to make it come out of Play-Doh holes on a tire so that you don't get a flat and that you don't lose tread. It's cool. I, I don't know if that's actually gonna come out or if it's just to showcase technology that'll eventually make it into a consumer product in a different shape sometime down the line. But what will come into a consumer product sometime down the line is true HDR computer monitors and true HDR support on Windows eventually, maybe, hopefully, probably never. But ISO has released the world's first true HDR reference monitor with built-in calibration center for professional color grading. They haven't written, announced a price, but all I know is that these things, when they're not HDR, go for thirty to $40,000. This thing's gonna be a spicy, pricey boy. Shut up and take my money. But you know what's spicy in my heart, Reese, this power supply from Seasonic, known as their first Connect 750 watt power supply. They showed it off previously at Computex, but now they're saying it's roughly ready. So it's basically the power supply with the tube of cables coming out to a strip that has all of your modular connectors. So you can plug it in elsewhere. You don't have to necessarily fuddle under the power supply shroud to try to plug in your cables. It's gonna make installing stuff so much easier, but it also depends on your case and whether or not you have room for the strip to put it in a place that's not gonna be obstructive and ruin your your cable management it's cool okay now let's go ahead and talk about Voldemort because I'm not allowed to say what it is and we haven't gotten demonetized on yesterday's video so calling it the C word worked but I feel a little weird about saying that so I'm gonna call it Voldemort from now on because after we reported yesterday that Google was canceling their cloud next event it came out right before our episode of hot news dropped that they're also canceling Google IO which is a pretty big deal for them that's typically where they unveil the new pixel devices it's also where they unveil a whole whole host of other devices. So it's a big thing for them and they have officially canceled it. As well as Amazon has come out and said, thanks to Voldemort, one of their employees has been death eaten. Amazon has confirmed that Voldemort has indeed struck their headquarters with one of their employees fallen to Voldemort, but not fallen. They met him. They met Voldemort. Voldemort might be running rampant through Amazon soon, which begs the question. Cut that one. <laughs> no. Ah, but you know what you're not gonna cut, Reese? This gaming bed from your life. This gaming bed from Baohut, which I'm probably pronouncing incorrectly because I don't know how to pronounce umlauts for some reason. My brain's just, you know how we have gaming chairs and we have gaming desks? Well, this one is a gaming bed. Check that. It's delicious. We I would sleep there. Delicious. Yes, you don't need to ever leave your bed. Play WoW from the comfort of your own filth. There you go. This is perfect for all you gamers out there. What else is perfect for you gamers is Halo, specifically Combat Evolved. The remaster is now finally available on PC in case you wanna play Halo Combat Evolved. There you go. In case you wanna play Valve's Half-Life Alex, which is supposed to be coming out later this month. Well, they've unveiled 20 minutes of gameplay footage that you can check out to see if it's gonna be more to your speed. But remember the Valve Index is $1,000 to get some VR. You might wanna pick up something like the Oculus Quest and then get a cable, a lift, rift, rift link cable to connect from the headset to your computer to play it that way. That's gonna run you about roughly $450 that's a little bit more appetizing. And then you also have a VR headset that you don't have to connect to a computer otherwise. You can just play Beat Saber with no wires. It's amazing. Reese, do you know the company Honeywell? Honeywell. Okay, in America, they're known for making thermostats, at least to me. I don't really know them for very much else. Well, they are saying that they've built the world's most powerful quantum computer because as I was doing my research for this, they're apparently a multinational conglomerate company, not just a company that makes thermostats like I thought. I'm a dumb dumb. Well, they are saying that they are indeed going to have a super, super fast 
quantum computer. It's gonna be more powerful than IBM. It's gonna be more powerful than Google. Honeywell coming out with the world's most powerful quantum brain. And Reese, did you know that you need to be gotten by DuckTales? Yes. Okay, because DuckTales Remastered was on Steam and Xbox One, but did you know it mysteriously disappeared? Really? It did. And now it's back, officially, with them saying that it's returned to digital storefronts. No word as to why it was gone after it was initially there. But now it's back, and in case you want DuckTales Remastered, go fetch it today. And that's gonna be the end of this hot news. What? We what? have a birthday today. Do we have a birthday today? Whose birthday is it? The it's PS2, it's 20. The PlayStation 2 is 20? I am old. You're, yes, he is old. PlayStation 2 is 20. Our butt legs. I need to know these things. Buy our merch. End this episode of Hot News. Bye! Sound of a CPU slapping, because this CPU slaps!